Hello, I am Alada Numbra, and today I will be breaking down my track Next Evolution for you. This was a pretty big project. It was over 30 hours in the making if you take into account all the time I spent doing sound design. I think that took me about a week. This is a really big project and I'm really happy with how it turned out. The first thing for me when it comes to making a track is I have to have some idea of what I'm going to do. And in this case, I wanted to tell a story or kind of set this scene. I wanted to create this futuristic theme. There was this like research lab and there's like stuff going on there sort of like creature escapes right oh no we gotta do something but then it's too late the name itself next evolution i had that name in mind going into the project and the reason for that was i wanted to push my style try some new things just have like fun with it go crazy and i think that i really succeeded in that here i'm gonna break it down section by section we'll start with the intro kind of get into the build up drop so on We'll look at the the sound design followed by the effects and the percussion. So to start off, I want to talk about some things I'm doing with mixing in general, just because you're going to see a lot of like recurring patterns here. For me, the way that I mix is a huge part of my sound design. So I take some mixing choices that some people uh, might not encourage, and I'm not necessarily going to encourage some of the stuff that I'm doing here either. Um, you can probably already see my master. Uh, the only thing on my master is this EQ curve right here. Everything below 40 hertz is getting cut. This is also a linear phase EQ on anything else. Like here, I'm just using um, a regular EQ. I've turned off high quality. This is gonna be such a such an interesting look into my questionable mixing techniques, but they work for me. Um, and I think that's something that I would strongly encourage is just try different mixing techniques and see what works for you. I don't really believe in a one size fits all approach. The mixing has changed a lot, even in the past few months alone. And then I have a loudness meter that I didn't even bother to look. I didn't even look at it this song. I probably should have once to monitor levels, but it it's fine it's it's okay <laughs> a lot of the mixing with eqs you'll see i'm doing a lot of cuts and there's not too much going on with like mid frequencies here i did do some i think this is one of the only things i really did any a lot of these are very um that actually gets filtered in but you'll see that a lot of the cuts that i'm doing i'm just cutting out huge chunks of the sound and i'm not doing very fine uh, EQing. That's something that going forward I'm trying to do more is make more specific EQ cuts. At one point I had experimented with cutting these re-spaces with some specific EQs, uh, but I was finding that it was actually negatively affecting the sound that I wanted. It was kind of destroying that. I like my mixes to have a lot of noise. You'll see that I have, I have very full frequency spectrums in terms of what I'm doing. All these limiters, uh, they aren't actually doing any limiting. They're all bypassed. So the ceiling is set to the max and the attack is turned all the way down. So no limiting is actually going on. Uh, these are used for sidechain. Very aggressively sidechain stuff. I really like that sound. It's a bit extreme and unnecessary to the amount that I do it at times. This particular song I actually sidechained less than I would usually, so that is something to bear in mind too. The main takeaways that I kind of do across the board for mixing, I tend to make very large cuts in the frequency spectrum. I also like having a lot of like noise because I like a lot of ambience, right? So I have a lot of just sounds everywhere. That's really all I have overall mixing things. I'm gonna talk a lot more about it as I go through this. Let's start with the intro. So I'll play it and then we'll break down each element. This is the opening to my song, Next Evolution. An entity has last been spotted traveling east the nearest research facility at 95 kilometers per hour. The subject is reported to be an organic life form of an unknown species and origin. ETA? Approximately five minutes. Lock down HQ. That thing cannot be allowed to breach this position. Already on it, sir. The garrison has been moved. Your efforts are futile. What follows cannot be stopped. The next evolution has already begun. It's quite uh, dramatic. It's very fun. I definitely didn't take myself too seriously at any point. I was just kind of like, oh yeah, let's try all these, let's try all these crazy things. We'll start with the instruments first. So we have this Reese bass that I synthesized. So I'll just play that on its own so you can hear it. Um, it just sounds like that. 
Uh, there's nothing too crazy going on. It's a super saw with the fundamental removed. It has a sine wave to replace the fundamental that was removed. And then the EQ. Yeah, okay, so a bit of resonance and then low pass. Uh, and then also a lot of portamento here too. And this was also done in serum. This is actually just a noise oscillator. I really liked the noise oscillator, so I tried to play around a lot with it. This is the one that I gave that very odd EQ curve to. I, it was since it's a more ambient texture, I didn't want it taking up too much presence in the mix. So I cut a lot of those frequencies, some EQ delay and reverb on it. This is just an ARP that I made. I also synthesized this. It starts opening up around here. It's a cutoff filter here, right? So that's opening up. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's the convolver here that's interesting. I disable this. This is using the blur white noise. So it's completely blurring the sound at the, at the start of the song, right? As you can see, the, the dry is slowly increasing. So that's when you start hearing the ARP actually come in. Fruity Convolver is probably my favorite plugin, just because there's a lot you can do with it. In this song, I didn't do anything too crazy. I mostly used it for ambience and for reverb. There are more creative things you can do with it, and something that I plan to experiment more with in the future. It creates a very nice ambient texture, and you'll see that I do this a lot too. I play around with the con Convolver quite a bit. Did I do it here too? I did, yes. This is a Convolver as well. It's doing the same thing. So I turn the wet knob up, and the dry one is... This one I turned down. Yeah, so it's just drenched in a ton of reverb. Low or high pass, basically. That was also a preset I made. It's just a sine wave. Some compression delay. I forgot to talk about the sound. So all the sound is, is you just automate moving slightly in the wavetable position. You normally see this moving, but it isn't. This is the dubstep growl. And pretty much all of this is being done by the patch itself. The only sort of post-processing going on, yeah, there's almost like no cutting going on here. It's just the 40 hertz cut. And then the side chain. It's not even being side chained right now. This LFO is controlling like pretty much every parameter that you could control. So it's controlling, it's controlling the frequency of this. It's controlling the amount of hyperdimension, chorus, flanging. And these are going opposite directions too, so the flanger is going up as this is going down. Another EQ filter is controlling the amount of compression and the amount of reverb. And then it's controlling all of these. It's just, it, I basically took this and routed it to every single thing that I possibly could, to the point where I actually ran, I didn't even know it was possible to run out of slots in the matrix, but I did it. This wavetable was custom, I think it was just a resampled super saw. It created a really nice sound. This LFO is actually controlling this one. So it's controlling the speed of this. So whenever, as this goes up, it slows down, and then as it comes down, it speeds up. So if you see that. So it's just controlling the volume of that. All these sounds are in my Serum Presets pack that I made, so I will link that below if you want that. When I organize my tracks, I group all of the synths and instruments together. So that's what's blue. I group all of the vocals and effects together, and then I group all of the percussion together. Onto vocals and effects. Sit rep ETA, lock down HQ. That thing cannot be allowed to breach this position. That's me talking. I gave it a, a really nice um, peak EQ there. I'm using M Auto Pitch do I'm not using any of the tuning, I just increased the width by 50 cents. Lock down HQ. So then if I add the EQ. Lock down HQ. Add this. Lock down HQ. The last thing that I've added is I add some compression, down sampling distortion. Turn these on one by one. Lock down HQ. Lock down HQ. Lock down HQ. I did also pan this around. I think pan this slightly left. Lock down HQ. That thing cannot. Yeah, it's a bit more left. I did it so that this was more on the left and this was more on the right. An entity has last been spotted traveling east from the nearest research facility at 95 kilometers per hour. Again, there's another peak EQ. M auto pitch. This one's increased 50 cents. I did leave the tuning on. I did basically the same effects chain here. Down sampling distortion last. And then there's a flanger on this one. 
so without the flanger. An entity has last been spotted traveling east from the nearest research facility at 95 It kind of gives it like shh, that like swoosh sound. It's like very guilty spark if you've played Halo before. The grow speed is used for here. I put on the time manipulation and I just set it to something that would just like warp the sound. Already on it, sir. The garrison has been. It's supposed to be like the AI is glitching out, right? This is also me. It's just processed way more. Your efforts are futile. What follows cannot be stopped. The next evolution has already begun. It's so over the top, but I love it. This is with nothing. The next evolution has already begun. And I pitched it down one semitone. And it's also set to stretch, so it sounds a little weird. The next evolution. The next evolution. Increasing the width by 100 is most of the sound there. Oh gosh, yeah, there's like a billion things here. <laughs> The next evolution has already begun. The next evolution has already begun. The next evolution has already begun. The warping is from the reverb filter, and that's being done by this automation clip. I really like using serum effects just because you have all these effects in one spot. For the vocals, I used it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was missing a lot of low end. I think. The next evolution has already begun. I added back in the low end. <laughs> That's what this was. Throughout the entire song, there's a lot of white noise sweeps. Also sub impacts too. I think in the build up, I, I do it quite a bit. It sounds very like Skyrim. I draw a lot of inspiration from video game music like Skyrim, Halo. My taste kind of emerged from that. For other ambient stuff, whatever you'd call this, some fuzziness. There's two things going on here. So this first one is a preset in Serum. It's literally just a noise oscillator. Some sirens here, because why not? There's this sound. I use it to cue in all of the spoken vocals. This one's different, this is like... And then I have this like dinosaur crawl effect. Yeah, I cut a lot of the high and low end out of that so it's more mid. I gave it some width, a lot of width actually, and then I put... What does this do? Oh, that was actually bypassed. So that does nothing actually. <laughs> The only other thing left in the intro, then, is percussion here. So they're kind of just layered together. You have a clap. Snare. A tiny chop snare. I think all of this is being panned as well. So it's like switching between left and right here. That's the intro, but I will move on to the build-up now. There is also a kick drum there too. So this is just EQ cut, OTT of course. You have to have you have to have an OTT at least somewhere in your song. You, well, you don't have to. That's a rule for myself. Put OTT on at least one thing. Convolver. It just it just makes it more washed. And then I always put EQs after my reverbs as well. It's another thing I do mixing wise. Is I will always put a I'll put an EQ before the reverb and after the reverb. Um, so to like shape what I want to go into it and then also shape what comes out. So there's a vocal chop here too. It's running the same mixing chain too. So it's the exact same. We have a riser. I just EQ'd it as well. Oh yeah, a lot of these like... I mean, it's a fitting name, Massive Clap, we have that. I layered it with this impact. And I cut the low end from that. Ignore these limiters, these are for sidechain. I could just do it with a volume clip automation, but no, I make it complicated, because it's funny. Um, just <laughs> There's five limiters on the Massive Clap. Yeah, so these... So you layer all these together, and it's a pretty full sound. And you have more build-up drums here. There's not too much to say about this. So it's like the same, it's the same thing that was here. Except there's no volume automation this time. So it's, it's, it's basically identical to this. This is the same as the Reese in the beginning. So this lead is also synthesized. That's... 
EQ before to cut some of that, boost that. Valhalla is super massive with 24%. I like the synth wider preset a lot. It's one of my favorites. Just makes it, it's a ridiculous amount of reverb. But I really like that sound, um, where it's just like super washed out. That's the one that's actually doing the filtering. There's a ton of reverb coming off of this. So then that just ducks it for a moment. Now we get to do drop one. Keep my shit, it's fit in my person. What's going on here is this EQ filter has fully opened up at this point. The volume kind of sweeps up and what it's doing is it's I'm automating the wet knob here. This one increases the volume of it, whereas with other reverbs, if you increase the wet level, sometimes it just washes out the sound. And in this case, I'm going for something that's more dynamic rather than just like washing out the sound. Like if you crank this all the way up, it's so loud. Do that for, it's so absurdly loud. So that's why I like this one, because you can just make a very small little wee. So I made this one too. This is basically the same thing as the basic Reese, except it has just a massive amount of drive. And no filtering either, it's completely unfiltered. So if you play these together, it's already very full. Chucking a lot of white noise into the background during a drop, um, it just adds more energy. It's very full. <laughs> Again, we just have all the impacts from earlier. You throw these in. This is where all the limiters come in. Some people either really like the kicks that I use or they tend to like really strongly dislike them. And I find it very entertaining because whenever I'm like sharing music with someone who hasn't heard it before, usually the first thing they point out is the kick. Here I made this and then they hear the kick and they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> this one is just a sample. Later in the song, I synthesized my own kick and layered it on top. And that's gonna create a very weird effect. The kick is sidechained to pretty much everything. Every single instrument, most of the effects. Then it's sidechained to the hi-hats. So with these hi-hats, I, I take a sample and I just write MIDI with it is usually what I do, because I like having it pitch up and down. And I also pan it left and right. So it's like, ooh, it's this ear, ooh, it's this one, right? It just adds a nice little bit of dynamic to the hi-hats. You don't have to do that. I like doing it. Yeah, so there's a more like reverberated snare. I just turned the fade all the way up. So it's more tight. There's a ton of sidechain going on. It's dropping the volume by 14 decibels. It's every time the kick hits, and I like having the longer release time too. I like that feel a lot. Because sometimes you might want like a tighter sidechain, but I, I like having a longer release. So anything that's really being sidechained by the kick is set to almost 250 milliseconds, and then anything else is like 90. Whenever the snare hits too, it does duck the sound too. Because all you do is you just take this, you route it. Once it's routed, you pull it up here, and then you could just tweak this. I really like this method. Um, it, it works for me in my workflow. You have like this laser effect. And that's getting panned left and right too. So we, I put gross beat on a ton of different channels. There's 18 gross beats. <laughs> I could theoretically just send everything to one like mixer channel over here, put gross beat on it, and then do it that way. I personally just like putting them on individual channels. Because then if I want to do like a different gate there, I can. They all start out like this. So they're initialized with this position. They're all linked to these controls. The toggle is what turns on and off, so it's the volume here. Second one here is mapped to like these. So you can like choose different gates, right? So I'll just like switch between these um, when I want a different one. 
But yeah, it switches to it. That happens throughout the song. On to the bridge, I guess you could call it. A gateway has opened. Our world will never be the same. The future lies in your hands. This is only the beginning. I still can't believe I transitioned from funk to side trance. I thought there was no way that this was going to work. I did it as a joke and then it turned out to be really cool. Super square. And you just give it a longer attack. Give it a very short release. They just play a ton of like staccato notes. EQ, Convolver, another EQ. Just starts out completely washed out. This is just a Reese variation. There's three voices of unison. Fundamental removed again. Sub there. EQ. Convolver is doing the reverb. Another EQ that said to cut the reverb again. It's being panned left and right, so. Go down, go down, go down. This one just is a long portamento. It's literally just a super saw. The only synth preset I use in this song, um, which is this one, it's from Flex, uh, the Vici bass. It's in the Fulcrum pack. It just like fades in here. And it's so fun. Background funk vocal, I chopped it up, so. Being panned left and right. Just a compressor, hyperdimension. And this is the cathedral one. The kick and snare are being sidechained to other things. Such a it's such a fun sound. So those are going left and right. It sounds weird on its own. But once you like put it in the mix. That rhythm, yeah, that rhythm on it works so well. This is the build-up. This is the last sound design thing that I get to talk about. This is saw in a square. You max out the distortion on it. I'm using the chaos oscillator, so this is a random. It just makes it random, so it's randomly changing the pitch. It's doing it very slightly. It's doing it down. So if, I, if I were to turn it up all the way, Uh, we don't want that. Here it gets layered. Yeah, it has this resonance thing. So it's giving a lot of nice movement. Two squares and a saw. That's up an octave that sounds. So it's taking up a huge amount of this frequency spectrum. Just an absolute ton of reverb on these. The AI is having a little monologue thing. It's the same processing from the beginning of the song. Reboot sequence complete. Woo, hype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pitch up your pitch up your chop snares. Twelve semitones. Time for drop. This whole thing is a drop. So I'm just gonna play this whole thing.
Convolver is turned off at the start. But the white powder goes. And And then it completely drops the dry. And it's that very wet, washed out ambient sound. And it just fades out. Yeah, I, I did a more melodic. Same lasers from the beginning. The same kick from before, but I layered it with this. So if I isolate that. Two sine waves, and they're just being like pitched really fast. So this first one is the body of the kick, and this is like the clicky sound. It sounds weird because I cut most of the low end because I'm layering it with this. It doesn't need that amount of transients because it's already super transient and like punchy already. It doesn't need more. But just it's I really like that sound. Some people don't like chop snares, but. I think it's iconic. Just really fast hi hats. Another open hi hat here. It's being it's being panned pretty far left and right too. It's the same thing from before. Take all the ambient elements from the beginning. So all of this gets brought back. That is my track. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you kind of got a look into what my production process is like. All of the presets I used in the song are free as well. They're in my preset pack. It has 40 presets in it. Oh, this one. This one's a close second. This is so excessive. It's just a Reese with a super square. <laughs> this one is just like if you want to add some really weird. Yeah, this is the one where you, it's literally just a noise oscillator. It's a noise oscillator too, but it's just like. <laughs> it's like very PlayStation. With a lot of these leads, I like to throw on super massive. This one is cool. That's awesome. Cool. Anyone here is like fine for a kick. I will leave the link for that in the description of this video if you want that presets pack. It is free. Ton of fun showing this track, making it. I will see you around soon, so have an awesome day.